Hi again uh, to the Informatics 2 class, and uh, we're going to start now lesson number seven. And we're going to be talking about sorting algorithms again. Last time we covered the uh, insertion sort, and today we're going to talk about the other algorithm, which is called uh, insertion selection sort. So we're going to define the selection sort and see how it works. And then we're going to go through some uh, simple example uh, on the same list we covered last time and see how it works when we use this selection sort instead. And then we're going to write s uh, some sample code uh, for the implementing the uh, selection sort. Uh, based on this uh, sample code, we're going to perform some complexity analysis and compare it actually with whatever we have already uh, found for the insertion sort. Then after that, we're going to talk about some of the properties, advantages, and disadvantages of the selection sort. Okay, let's start. Selection sort algorithm. Needless to remind you that this is an internal sorting algorithm. In this algorithm, again, the list is divided into two sublists. One, one is called sorted list, and the other is unsorted list or sublist. At each step of the algorithm, we look for the smallest entry in the unsorted list. Okay, and then put that as the last entry in the sorted list. Okay, by swapping it with the first element in the unsorted. We're going to see this in a picture. The picture is something like this. <clears throat> I'm in the middle of the process. These elements have already been sorted. And these elements are the unsorted. So what I'm going to do, this is the wall separating the sorted from the unsorted. I will search these entries all together in the unsorted list, looking for the minimum entry, assuming again that we're performing ascending order uh, uh, sorting. That means at the end of the day, smallest element in the list is going to be here, largest going to be there. So I'm not going to touch this. I'm always looking at the unsorted sublist. Search this sublist. Look, look for the minimum entry. Once you find it, let's say somewhere here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap it with this first entry in the unsorted. Okay? Then it's guaranteed that the first element I find, uh, the minimum element I find in the first time, which I already inserted some time ago, now the list has bigger elements than any of these elements here. That means the smallest element I find in here is for sure bigger than any element in here. Therefore, all I'm going to do is take this minimum entry which I found and place it in here. And now this is going to uh, join the sorted list and I'm going to move this wall forward and my su uh, sorted sublist is going to be incremented by one. My unsorted sublist is uh, size is going to be decremented by one. Okay, let's take an example and see how that thing works. Initially, the size of the sorted sublist is going to be zero. No entries are sorted so far. So this is unlike the insertion sort. I'm not going to put the first entry in the list and assume it's, uh, it's inserted. And henceforth, the size of the unsorted is all the entries. All in, uh, in entries are unsorted to me. So that's the initial setting for the algorithm. In the middle of the process and at each step in the algorithm, the size of the sorted is going to be incremented and the size of the unsorted is going to be decremented because um, at the end of each iteration, one element in here is going to be migrated to here from the unsorted to the sorted. When do I terminate? Well, I simply terminate when the unsorted list has only one entry. Then no need to search for the, uh, the smallest entry in there. It's the only entry and just keep it there. It's definitely the largest entry in the list. Otherwise, it would have been taken earlier and exchanged with some other entry. So then my terminating condition is when I reach to a point where the size of the unsorted list is 1. Here is the example. 
This is the list that we have, and it's exactly the same list we uh, uh, tried to order when we were talking about the insertion sort last time we met. Task 6 entries randomly distributed in the list. To me, as an initial setting, the wall is here at the very beginning. Nothing in here in the sorted uh, sublist. The size of the unsorted sublist is the size, the exact same size of the list itself. So that's the original list. Then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to search this looking for the minimum entry. So I need to run uh, uh, an engine which searches for the minimum entry. Looking for the minimum, here it is. Okay, I found it. Searched everything. This is the minimum entry. What I'm going to do now is to take this entry and exchange it, swap it with this entry in here. So after the first pass, what I'm going to have in here in the first position is 8. And instead of the 8 here, I'm going to have the 23, which was here. And now I can advance my pointer, my wall, so that the size of the sorted is now incremented from 0 to 1. The size of the unsorted is decremented from 6 to 5. So that's step number 1. Okay. So swap, in this case, is only called once, once I found the minimum entry in the list. Okay. However, I need to go in an exhaustive search for the minimum entry in the unsorted list. All right. We're at, uh, at the end of step number one, and we're, here's the situation. We proceed. The size of the unsorted list is still large, larger than one. So I iterate again. Again, I search the unsorted list, looking for the minimum entry in there. Okay, what's the minimum entry? 78, 45, 23, 32, 56. Okay, it's the 23. Excellent. Found that. I need now to exchange this with the first entry in the unsorted. It's important to note now that all entries in here are for sure, and this is obvious, they're larger than the, any entry in here. And this is obvious. The minimum search engine in here actually comes after founding, uh, finding this one. So all entries in here are for sure bigger than this one. However, I'm searching for the minimum among this list now. And that's why I'm going to search for this 23. I found it here. Okay, so now I'm going to swap it, exchange it with the entry, the first entry in the unsorted sublist. Okay, actually, this first entry in the sublist comes right after the last entry in the sorted. And that's why placing this small entry in here is actually like putting this together with these in a sorted sublist. And that's exactly what we have in here. I advance the wall forward because now this is guaranteed to be smaller than any of these entries and it's for sure bigger than the last entry in here. So after this step in the process, I have two entries already sorted. Okay? And once again, it's important to notice that this 8 is the smallest. So it sits in the first place in the sorted list, and it's going to stay here for, uh, till the end of the process. will never change its position. And that means once I find the minimum at any stage, the minimum entry, and I place it in the first position in the uh, unsorted sublist, that's going to be the final position of the entry. And this is unlike the insertion sort we covered last time. Okay, let's proceed. So the sorted size is 2, unsorted size is 4. Let's go to the next step. What I have now is uh, the, uh, let me go back to the last picture in here. In here, again, I'm going to search this sublist for the smallest entry. Smallest entry is the 32, all right? And then I need to swap it with the first entry here. So 45 goes here, 32 goes here. And this is the smallest. So I, this, uh, this one can join now the sorted list. So I swap the 32 with the 45. All right. And I advanced my pointer, my separator between the sorted and unsorted 
one position forward. So the size here is 3, incremented by 1 from the previous case. Size here is 3, decremented by 1 from the previous state. Okay. And now, once again, search this for the minimum entry. Here's the minimum entry in the list. This is the smallest among them. Exchange it with this one. All right, 78 goes here, 45 goes here. And now, this 45, once it comes here, it's in its final position. Sorted. Advance your wall. Increment the size here by 1. Decrement the size here by 1, from 3 to 2. The size is still 2, larger than 1. Proceed. Iterate again. Look for the minimum. Minimum is 56. Exchange it with this one. All right, 56 goes here, 78 goes here. And then advance your, uh, your pointer to here, as a matter of fact. I'm skipping one step there. The wall goes here at the very beginning. And 56 is placed in this position, 78 in this position. Okay, so this is the sorted list. This is the unsorted. But actually now the, the size of the unsorted is just one. And that's my terminating condition, as I said. So it's the largest entry in the list. It's guaranteed now. If it's any smaller, then it would have been taken before. So no need to stop in here. And then you're going to take the whole list now as sorted list. As, uh, uh, and as we can see, the list is now sorted from the smallest entry to the largest entry. And that's where we terminate after this step. So six entries in here, and I only needed five passes. That means I go through n minus 1 entries in the list. That's pretty much how this selection sort works. Very simple, very straightforward, and very easy to understand. Let's implement this algorithm in a piece of code. Very simple, straightforward. Just two major steps that we do in the process. I'm going to go through all entries in the list. Actually, all except one, because my terminating condition is that I stop when the size of the unsorted equals to one. So if I have n entries, then I'm, uh, I'm going to iterate n minus one times. Okay? The two major steps in the middle of the process are to look for the minimum, and once I find it, swap between the minimum and the first entry in the uh, unsorted list. So pretty much, I'm going to go for a for loop in which I'm going to start backwards now, according to the implementation here, and that doesn't hurt at all. From the very last position, that's n minus 1, down to but not equal to 0, not equal to the first entry, and that's my terminating condition again. I stop when the, si when the size of the unsorted is 1. I go back at every step. How many times I go then? n minus 1 times, basically. At each step, I find the minimum key. Okay, basically, I need to find the position of the minimum key. So this function in here, which is called min key, it starts in the unsorted list, all over the unsorted list. The unsorted list is something like this. Here's my list. Here's entry number 0, and here's entry number n minus 1. Okay, I'm going to start backwards like this. Okay, so at any stage, let's say I'm at position, what I call here position, and that's my index. So this is position. Now, this part is sorted, and this is the unsorted part. Of course, including this one, it's not sorted yet. So, uh, at this position, uh, this is sorted. This is unsorted. What I'm going to do, search all of these entries in here, looking for the minimum. Okay, so I'm going to start looking for the key or the index of the entry the minimum entry, starting from zero up to where I am standing at the moment, and that's position. Okay? So that's the scope of my search. Okay? Then 
as a return from this function, min will contain the uh, index of the minimum entry. So let's say that the minimum turns out to be here. Then this min key function here is going to actually return the index here, and I'm placing that in what's so-called min. So min is not the actual value of the entry or the element in the list, but rather it's the index of that entry in the list. Okay, I found it. Position is still standing here, and that's where my, minim my minimum uh, key is, or minimum element is. So now what do I need to do? I need to swap these two, okay? So then next, I'm gonna call a function called swap. And in that, I'm gonna be swapping the, the element at position min with the element at position position, okay? And that's it. Keep doing this, iterating again and again till you're through with all n minus one entries till the size of the unsorted is one, and that's where we stop. That's gonna be guaranteed to be the biggest entry in the array. Let's look at the implementation of the min key function and the swap function. We're gonna start from the min, min key function. Basically, this function returns an integer which resembles the index of the, uh, of the element, of the smallest element in the unsorted list. Okay, so that's the return value of type integer. This function takes two parameters of type integer, indices again. And this determines the scope within which I want to search. In our case, we were uh, uh, searching between position, uh, uh, index zero and index position, the range of the unsorted. In here, they're called low and high. So between low and high, please tell me where is the minimum element located and give me that index, return it back as a return value of the function. How to do that? I'm gonna define uh, two integer uh, uh, local variables called smallest and current. We're gonna see how, uh, how we're gonna use these. This is gonna serve actually as an index for the internal loop because definitely I need to loop to make all comparisons with all entries inside the unsorted list and smallest will represent actually the index of the uh, uh, minimum element. And that's actually uh, what I want to return. Okay, as an initialization step, smallest is gonna be assigned to low. I'm gonna assume that smallest is this one. Hoping that the first entry here represents the smallest uh, key or element in the array. If not, I'm gonna move it as I move forward with my comparisons, okay? Then, I'm gonna go all over this list. Now from low plus one, because no need to check with this, I'm putting myself in there. I'm making the assumption that this is the smallest. And I need now to compare this with the rest of these entries up to position. And that's why my loop here goes from, from low plus one to high to the last entry in the scope, incrementing by one each time. What do I do? Well, simply, if the, uh, the uh, element at the current position is less than the element pointed by smallest, then this is not the smallest element. Then I want smallest to go and point to that minimum entry. And that means smallest has to equal to current because the element pointed by current is smaller than the element pointed by smallest so far. And that's why this is not the best choice. The best choice is somewhere else and it's pointed by uh, uh, current now. Okay, so keep repeating this in the loop all over the scope. Each time compare whatever smallest is pointing at the moment with the uh, uh, element at the current position and make this assignment whenever you think that the element is smaller than the, what you have in smallest. 
once you're through with this loop, then definitely now smallest is pointing to the smallest element in the, uh, in the list, in the unsorted list. So we're going to return the value of smallest. Again, smallest is not the physical value of the element, but rather it is the index of the smallest element in the index. Okay? The swap function. Well, I have seen the swap before. And basically, uh, I have two quantities in two different variables, and I need to exchange them. And as we said earlier uh, in, in uh, previous classes, is that I need to have some temporary storage of the same type so that I can temporarily store one of the elements in there, move the second element to the first position, and take whatever I have in a temporary location to the first uh, uh, variable. And that's what we're doing here. Actually, uh, I'm passing to this swap function the index, and that's like a pointer, okay? The index of the low and high, the two quantities actually uh, that I need to exchange, the two elements. I'm calling them here low and high. They could be A and B, whatever. And then I start the function with defining a, a temporary variable of the same type as these variables. And what I'm saying is now I'm going to save in this temp the element pointed by low, pointed by the first index. And then now I can copy whatever I have in the uh, 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 pointed by the other index high to whatever uh, uh, position pointed by low. And then whatever I already saved in temp is going to uh, now go safely to uh, array of high. We have seen this. It's very simple, straightforward. Okay. Remember with me the apple orange example I gave a few classes ago. It's straightforward. And uh, again, uh, since we talked at that time about the bad and good example of, uh, uh, of the swap function, and remember that we talked about pointers passing by pointers and not by values because values are not going to be changed once we go back. And here, we're not passing uh, pointers as there are no uh, asterisks, no stars in here. Actually, what we're passing in here are the indices of the elements and not the elements in, uh, themselves. So yes, the indices are not gonna change. Obviously, we're not gonna change the indices. We're gonna just change the contents. So actually, these are pointers to the elements themselves. So I'm not passing the, the uh, elements, but rather I'm passing pointers to the elements. So this is equivalent to the good, good example of swap I've shown you a while ago. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's look in here, and I will go back uh, uh, to, the, to the other uh, min key uh, function as well. Let's see how many comparisons and assignments do we have. Well, no comparisons whatsoever in this. I have three assignments in here. So each time I call swap, there are three assignments. Good. Let's go back here. Min key. What do I have in here? Let's see. There is a loop down here, and this loop goes to the size of the unsorted, okay? I have a comparison in here and then an assignment, okay? Keep that in mind as this is going to help a lot when we go to the analytical analysis, okay? The main loop of the program of the selection sort, as we said, runs n minus 1 times because, as we said, we're going to terminate when the size of the, uh, of the unsorted list is 1. And that means the main loop is going to uh, iterate n minus 1 times. Each time I iterate, mainly I'm going to call the main key function once and I'm going to call the swap function once. This is going to look for the minimum entry. And once I find it, I need to swap it 
with the first entry in the unsorted list. So I call this once, call this once. Okay? N minus one times in total. What does that mean? Each time it's called, swap performs three assignments, as I said, to perform the, uh, the exchange between the two uh, elements. No comparisons in the swap function. All right? So only three assignments, zero comparisons when I call swap. And now swap is called n minus one times. Swap one called n minus one times. Each time, number of assignments equals three. Number of comparisons equals zero. Okay? I'm writing this because we're going to refer to it. I don't want to miss with the going back and forth with, with the slides. Therefore, the total number of operations performed for the swap function are zero for the comparisons, no comparisons. And for the assignments, each time I call it, I need three assignments. Now I'm calling it n minus one times. Therefore, total number of assignments is going to be simply three times n minus one. Very simple, straightforward. Let's go to the min key function. The min key function is again called n minus one times. So let me write that down here. In the main loop, which goes n minus one times, min key called n minus one times. Okay, each time it's called, now it's gonna go all over the unsorted list searching for the minimum entry, for the minimum element. Well, how much is the size of the unsorted list? That depends, right? At the very beginning, it's n minus, minus two, okay? Uh, uh, then n minus 3, then n minus 4. At the very end, it's going to be just two elements. So each time I move on with my, with my code, the size of the unsorted list changes. And based on that, then the number of comparisons I need to perform actually to find the minimum entry or the minimum element is going to be different. It depends upon the stage at which we are in the process. So the size then shrinks from n at the very beginning and that's the initialization, and then down to two, because we, t we terminate actually the process when the size is one, as I said. Therefore, number of comparisons could be n minus one, or n minus two, n minus three, and downward, till I have just two elements, I need just one comparison to find the uh, minimum of the two. Compare this with this. And that's why I'm adding up all of these. So the total number of comparisons is simply, if I add up all of this, this is a simple geometric series, and it comes out to n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So again, if I want to use the uh, big O notation, this is in the order of n squared divided by 2 minus the order of n, and that's plus order of n, and we're going to get to the, to, to the order big O notation later on. So basically, uh, the major term in here is the one-half n squared, okay? So lots of comparisons, and that's obvious. Swap, you don't do much. You just swap the two values, three assignments, and that's it. However, when, when it comes to the search, it's an exhaustive search, as we have seen in here. Each time I'm in the middle of this process, I need to exhaustive search this entire list looking for the minimum entry. And this is a lot of work. So for that, I have large, relatively large number of comparisons as compared to number of assignments. And now to compare between the selection sort, which we already covered, with the, with the insertion sort, the technique which we covered last time, 
uh, we can see that the number of assignments are in the order of n, 3n, to whereas it's in the order of n squared for the insertion sort. So again, if I'm talking about 100 entries, then I have in the order of 300 assignments to be made uh, in the uh, selection sort, to whereas I need something like 10,000 divided by 4, of course, but that's still a large number. This thing becomes really critical and crucial when the number n is large. So obviously, this is, is more attractive, this algorithm is more attractive than the insertion sort is, uh, 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 is used when uh, I have large number of entries. When n is large, uh, I prefer to use the selection sort rather than the insertion sort. When it goes to the comparisons, number of comparisons, it's almost the same, order of n squared. Yes, here it's one, one quarter and here it's one half, but, but again, it's in the order of n squared and that's large. And this really becomes large when n grows. And typically, uh, our practical lists are of large size. A typical example on that is the telephone directory where you have half a million or one million uh, uh, the telephone numbers and you have to uh, somehow sort the, uh, uh, the list or the directory according to the alphabetical order of the names or something like that. And that's why we prefer to use this, the selection sort rather than the insertion sort. Of course, this depends. We're going to see uh, in a minute uh, the properties of this uh, technique uh, uh, in terms of advantages and disadvantages and we're going to elaborate on the usage of this and that later on. Let's move on. Properties of the selection sort. Advantages or pros. Simple to understand and implement. Very easy, straightforward. All you need to do is always to search in the unsorted list looking for the minimum. Swap it with the, uh, the one on top and it's sorted now. Predictable, that means uh, it's not probabilistic. Remember the uh, uh, insertion sort was kind of probabilistic. We had to talk about probability because I don't know what's the nature of the, uh, of the elements and I don't know uh, how far do I need to go back when I put the books on the shelf. However, in here, it's predictable. I know what's the exact size of the unsorted list. Just search it. Go through all entries, and you have to go through all entries. Uh, if, if you find a small entry in the middle, okay, you can't be just happy with it and swap it because God knows what, what kind of elements we have in the rest of the unsorted list. So I'm going to go all over the entire unsorted list, find the minimum, and uh, exchange it. So there's no probability in there. And I can find the exact number of comparisons and exact number of assignments I make in here as compared to average number of comparisons, average number of assignments we derived for the insertion sort algorithm. Moves entries very efficiently. Well, it's, it is very efficiently because I don't make the swap till I'm sure, 100% sure, that this, the entry in hand is the smallest entry and I want to put it in the final position now. Okay, so only one swap is performed when I know for sure that this is the exact right swap I need to make. And uh, I don't have to go position by position the same way I was going when I was talking about the insertion sort. However, there are some disadvantages for this uh, uh, algorithm. And uh, there are always advantages and disadvantages for al uh, any algorithm. And uh, that's why all algorithms are available, as a matter of fact, and you can select based on the application you have. Cons or disadvantages. It pays no attention to the original ordering of the list. Well, if the list happens to be already ordered, and I uh, entered this sorting algorithm, does it make any difference to me? No, I don't see. I don't see that, as a matter of fact. I'm going to start from the very beginning. Take the first entry, search for the minimum. It happens to be the first, but I cannot tell if it's the first or not unless I search all entries in the rest. And then I find the, the first one, okay. Uh, no swaps, it stays there, fine. And then go to the second entry. 
make the uh, uh, search for the main key search again all entries so whether the list is sorted or it's not sorted i'm gonna always call that function which is called uh, uh, main key uh, which is called uh, uh, main key so i have always to search for the minimum whether the list is sorted or unsorted and this is unlike to the insertion sort in the insertion sort I got an advantage of the semi-ordered list because the number of positions I need to go back now depend upon the, the entry in hand. So if it is uh, uh, the, uh, the, the proper entry in the proper place, then I don't go back. So that, uh, that prevent me from going into the inner loop, which needs lots of calculations. So in here, this is, yes, a disadvantage, and I don't get advantage of the, this fact. It does many redundant comparisons. Actually, each time I want to search for the minimum key, I have to search all entries in the list. And I don't keep that knowledge in my mind for the later stage. Okay? So I look for the minimum entry at this stage. I forget about all the knowledge. All I care about is the, to find the minimum entry and swap it. Uh, and the next time I do uh, uh, search for the, uh, the next minimum, I search the entire list again. Okay, so I don't gain any knowledge, I don't learn during the process. Okay, so that's a kind of disadvantage. Of course, there are modifications on the selection sort to where I can have uh, uh, advantage of this knowledge that I built over uh, the time with the iterations and that thing make things uh, a little bit faster. So it depends now on the advantages and disadvantages of this technique or that technique to select whether I want to use the insertion sort or the selection sort. But generally speaking, selection sort is more attractive in terms of number of assignments. That's the major thing. Here's a final example to look at. Here's the original list, okay? And the list now is all unsorted, all right? And uh, I'm gonna start searching this entire list looking for the minimum. Here's the minimum. Swap it with the first entry here. So nine goes up, 25 goes in this position. And now this is sorted. So the light blue color here indicates the sorted list. The dark blue indicates the unsorted. So that's the first iteration. I found the nine, put it on top. This is the unsorted. Search for the minimum. The minimum here is 12. Okay, I'm gonna swap the, the 12 with the 25. 20, uh, 12 goes here, 25 goes down here in this position, and now the size of the sorted has been incremented by one. Unsorted, search for the minimum, it's 25. It's swap or exchange the 25 with the 63. Size increased, size of the unsorted decrease. Two entries, this is the last step I'm gonna do. Okay, look for the minimum. Minimum is 47. Swap it with this. So 47 goes here, 63 goes here. Now the size of the unsorted is just one. I stop, definitely, because 63 is for sure now the biggest entry, and I can make this light blue now, and the whole list is sorted. So I have like five entries in here. I needed only four iterations to complete the process, and the whole thing is sorted. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Hope you liked this uh, sorting technique the way you liked the previous one. If you'd like to see uh, more examples and more exercises, definitely you go back to the Nutuno website on the internet, click on the MidNetU project link, and you're gonna find lots of interesting stuff in there. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time. Bye.